Great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm just going to stitch together um, or pander a little bit for the first moment here. I've only been in, um, in Israel for 24 hours. Um, and in my role um, that I have at Google, I have a uh, global perspective on the business and so have the opportunity to travel a bunch. And so um, it's rare or uh, there are markets around the world where we're seeing, I think, a lot of good, fantastic activity that's going on where the ecosystem is thriving and where we have an opportunity to, I think, do a lot of interesting things. Um, and even in 24 hours that I've been here in Tel Aviv, I've certainly noticed that in APAC, unequivocally, we have uh, a lot of those same ingredients. And from a market dynamics perspective, a lot of interesting business that's going on, certainly in the US market. Uh, there's no substitute for coming into a native market and actually seeing what is going on. Um, and had the fortunate opportunity of spending some time last night with some of the bigger game developers that are here um, in Tel Aviv. And it's incredibly clear that, again, this uh, mantra or this perspective on the startup nation is, is certainly true. And again, that's the pandering side. I'll get that out of the way. Um, but really excited about A, being here, B, uh, the opportunity to engage with many of you over the next couple days, um, and then the future opportunities, certainly, um, for the Israeli market. Um, so again, I'm Brendan. Um, the role I have at Google, I sit in between our uh, global sales team and our product and engineering organization on the ad side. So I think about applications uh, both on the buy side, the sell side, and measurement. So we're going to talk specifically about, I think, uh, discovery and gaming and uh, broad, uh, and then dive into a couple specific things as it relates to the potential solutions and opportunities at Google. And so uh, I want to start out with, um, if can get, um, so I'm going to start out with a little bit of a history lesson. This thing right here, um, this is uh, called the Royal Game of Ur. It's the first known game that actually uh, is in existence. It dates back to about uh, 3000 BC, uh, highly sophisticated, very pretty, uh, detailed game. We can call this a freemium version of a game. Uh, and if you actually, um, there's another version of this that was discovered by archaeologists in northern Iraq um, 3,000 years after. And so this would be considered, this was again uh, uh, discovered in northern Iraq on a uh, stone uh, gate. Um, and again, this is the free version. And so uh, amazing to have a title that could certainly span 3,000 years. If there's anybody in this room that has a title that lasts that long, certainly I think we'll all be happy and have good, strong businesses. Um, but an example um, of the fact that A, games have been around for a long time, and B, cut across swaths of society. The second picture here is actually from uh, India, and this game is called Gayan Shapur. Um, and it's essentially a dice game, and you try and go from the bottom to the top uh, on this, and it goes from uh, how do you go through the different, it's a morality-based game, and as you get towards the top, that's how you essentially view yourself getting into uh, the upper echelons of, of transcendence or enlightenment. And this game um, moved and migrated to um, the UK, presumably through the spice trades and shipping into the form of uh, snakes and ladders, and then ultimately to the US in the form of uh, shoots and ladders. And so as you think about discovery, uh, this game in particular um, took a long time to, to, to make its way around, um, but again, has been around for a long time. There we go. Shoots and ladders. There you go. There you have it. And this is the first handheld digital game. Uh, it's actually the second one um, from Mattel. Um, the first one was actually a car racing game, uh, but this one in particular was a football game that, um, that I had and certainly brought, brought back fond memories of playing as a kid. Um, and so I think the, the key point is that um, all of these different games took a long time to get discovered. Uh, the discovery mechanism was fundamentally different. It took a very long time. And then also, ultimately, that games do cut across geographic boundaries, cuts of society, um, and, and uh, over time. And as we get to at least the current present day, where the mobile phone, I think, is the first opportunity in the first place where we're actually starting to see both game play and discovery happening on the same device. And currently today, there's about 1.4 billion users globally um, that are gamers. That's two in three of the total smartphone population globally. So it represents a significant opportunity. And what do I want to talk about specifically today is this notion of discovery, um, the role therein, and how, how Google can help on this front. Not surprisingly, um, and I think most people in this room would understand this, is that today, um, gaming is one of the leading things that is done uh, on a phone. When people unbox a phone, one of the first things they do clearly is install applications. And the first type of application that they install are games. When we look at the Play Store, um, and you start to look at even some of the behavior that is going on in the Play Store from a search perspective, that gaming is the biggest vertical as it relates to query volume that's going on 
um, on the Play Store. And so again, as a gamer and endemic to this audience here is what is the opportunity to engage with all of these highly qualified users that are actively out there um, looking to install games? One thing that I want to particularly point out is that while this is a gaming device, is that the, the phone is, and again, uh, stating the obvious in many ways here, um, the device that we use for everyday life and all the things that we do. Um, at Google I.O. last year, we talked about the fact that uh, users are checking their phone on average 150 times a day for a multitude of different tasks, from both lean back and entertainment to lean forward where very intent-rich moments where you're searching and looking for information um, and everything in between. And so that represents the opportunity, I think, and one of the things that Google gets very excited about and I think we have the platform for is to help you as a game developer to reach those moments when people are actively looking for your product or service in either of those environments. And so the three things that I'm going to talk about today um, as it relates to um, how do you uh, basically find users um, and then how do you basically also make money, um, predicated on both the measurement side of knowing who your user base is, getting discovered, and then driving the business results from a both in-app purchase and an advertising perspective. So we're gonna start with knowing your users. There's a stat that I saw um, in early uh, 2015 that said roughly 20 to 30% of all developers um, have analytics incorporated into their app. So to me, that's kind of a shocking stat. Um, I don't know if that reigns true with anyone in this audience, but hopefully at a minimum, um, you are integrating app, app, uh, analytics into your application so that you have the insights, the data, and the measurement to make more informed and thoughtful decisions, not only about um, as it gets to the point of how you're thinking about user acquisition, but I think more importantly, even at the early stages of what are the dynamics of the game? How do you uh, build an effective game? Where are users dropping off? And enabling you to make more informed, like I said, decisions about what's going on. So that can both be on the user analytics side, but also on the buy side from a media and attribution perspective. At I.O. Um, last year, we made an announcement, and again, on the two different sides of using analytics, there's Google Analytics that allows you um, to use uh, the in-app um, behavior and user experience aspect of it. But we also announced that from a media attribution standpoint, relationships with 20 different ad networks and all the third-party tracking providers. So that the um, analytics package allows you to do both buy-side and sell side measurement capabilities in one solution. And so again, beyond just whether it's the Google solution or if it's anything else from a third party perspective, is making sure that you are tracking, measuring, and understanding what users are A, doing in your application, and then B, fundamentally as you start to invest from a media standpoint, are critical parts of being successful from a user acquisition perspective. So I'm gonna to pivot to user acquisition specifically. Um, as I talked about, I think Google is very well positioned to help from a um, top of the funnel and a bottom of the funnel perspective to get and engage with users that are actively either A, looking or being entertained, um, and then like I said, at the lower portion of the funnel from a search perspective. And so there's four properties that we have um, and that are effective ways for you to think about how you can drive engagement um, and reach users um, uh, at, at, for, across the Google portfolio. So number one is search. Um, I think much of this industry has been predicated on in-display or display advertising as a way to drive customer acquisition. And search we're finding that is actually a very significant way um, to reach people on the lower portion of the funnel. And I'll talk more about the recent launch of running ads in Google Play as a very um, effective way to do this. The second thing is with YouTube. We've recently launched in the last six to nine months uh, the uh, um, TrueView campaigns that now you can do app install as well. And so you have uh, the same capabilities that you do on YouTube, which has a very um, specific gaming audience um, where there's an opportunity to leverage the video format on YouTube and drive installs. And there are over a billion users today on the YouTube platform. Um, the Google Display Network, which I will talk about both AdMob and also the ability to run on mobile web. So the capabilities to essentially, again, as we think about where the industry has been over the last four or five years, of kind of an in-app network and both an in-web mobile network to reach users on that platform. And then certainly, as I alluded to last but not least, is the ability to now run ads in Google Play. So irrespective of kind of the environment that the user is in, whether it is, again, kind of sitting back and watching video on YouTube, whether it's more down in the lower portion of the funnel and you're searching for a particular product or service in the App Store, um, and last but certainly not least, that mechanism of 
being in an app environment within a gaming environment and reaching users, um, I think are both or all very interesting ways to drive discovery. Um, the challenge, and I think one of the issues, and here's a, a little data point from a survey that we ran recently, that 52% of users have uh, not, that have downloaded a game never end up playing. So the critical point that I want to make is that intent is so important as it relates to in the pre-qualification. And so there's a couple things on that front. Number one, um, and I'll talk more about this, but from a video perspective overall, video is a very, very strong uh, and compelling way to do some of that pre-qualification. If you've watched 30 seconds of a video ad, you're certainly far more likely to be engaging um, and use that app um, than in another environment. The second thing is that also from a search perspective, that we have that ability, that is really, I think, one of the driving forces uh, of intent over the last 10 or 15 years. So I think any of the products that we have that are search in nature, especially in the Play Store, are very relevant. And then last but not least are, um, I think, the benefit of, of Google and having both um, all of these different media opportunities, but then also the Android marketplace, is that there are data signals that we get from Android, both in, let's say, uh, people that make in-app purchases and all kinds of different information that allow you to do more advanced and I think sophisticated targeting um, that do allow you to do some of that pre-qualification. So again, I think the main takeaway is that while um, you know, driving installs is key, it is ultimately I think you want to be driving the quality installs. And again, I'm um, stating the obvious here, but um, some of this data definitely reinforces that perspective. So all that aside, there's a bunch of different products that you could potentially leverage at Google from a discovery standpoint, but how do you do it simply and easily? A lot of times we hear from developers, whether they're larger, more sophisticated developers that have in-house marketing teams, or whether they're smaller developers that really don't have the marketing capabilities in-house, is that there is a barrier to entry to be able to actually buy all of these different campaign types at Google. So we recently launched in the last month or so something called Universal App Campaigns, which is very simply the set it and forget it campaign type at Google that allows you to basically take your app ID, um, your CPI and your budget, and this automatically runs across all of the inventory we have. So it truly is a very simple and effective way um, to get uh, easy access to distribution across all of Google's products. Um, one of the things that we've been seeing from this as it's been, come out of the gates is that actually sophisticated advertisers and smaller advertisers are using this um, as a way to build their marketing campaigns. Here are just a few simple screenshots of what we do, and again, as a result of having the Play Store, we can easily just take a lot of the imagery that comes from Google Play and auto-generate ads, uh, and you hear see left to right, uh, standard video ad that we would have if you have a video um, asset on the Play Store and the com com uh, companion ad around it. You can see in the search results the app install ad that shows up. Um, we run in mobile web, and so your ability to kind of run ads on the mobile web, auto-generate those. Uh, interstitials within the AdMob network, and then last but certainly not least, those ads that run on the Play Store. And so I just want to take one moment to talk about the Play Store and spe uh, specifically. I know in many conversations with developers that one of the biggest challenges um, is actually merchandising in the Play Store, and there are a lot of great things that you can do to, I think, build out those capabilities uh, to make sure that you are ranked, to make sure that you're getting editorially reviewed. Um, but like anything from a merchandising standpoint, Placement is key, and so this is the first time where within the Play Store that you can actually um, leverage an ads product um, to uh, get some of that and you know, work. It's not a guaranteed of placement by any means. It's the same auction dynamics that we have in our core AdWords product, but allows you to get better visibility and control that experience a lot more effectively. From a YouTube standpoint, um, as I talked about, very, very rich and engaging opportunity, and gaming has actually been one of the key um, drivers of um, the content as of late on YouTube. And so a couple things that I want to call out here. 20% of, uh, of the 100 most subscribed channels are gaming related. So again, a very, very rich gaming user base that exists on YouTube. 37% of the people watching gaming videos on YouTube consider themselves ga gamers. And then in October of last year, uh, there are 80, 80 days where uh, gaming video trends were in the top 10. And so um, this led to, and a lot of these types of insights led to why we actually created uh, and broke out a specific app, which is we now have the YouTube gaming app, um, which is, again, another rich environment. If you're trying to go after uh, a good quality user base that is certainly more endemic to your, this, this particular audience, 
been a very uh, exciting and interesting way to get in front of those users. So the video ad product, for those of you that may not be familiar, the product is called TrueView, and it is very, very simply a video ad product. Uh, it can be 15 seconds, it can be 30 seconds, it can be whatever you want. Um, and basically the way this it works is that you only pay when a, when a video view is completed. So this is a skippable format after five seconds, and if you watch the full 30 seconds, that's the paying moment, or if I click on the install button to install the app. And so um, video ad pre-qualification drives to uh, install, and inline installs um, uh, are the, the thing that we have on YouTube. So I wanna stop there before I go into the next section and just kind of recast. As you think about discovery, as you think about how do you get users to um, find your app, there are numerous ways that you can do it on YouTube from, or excuse me, from Google, both in the upper funnel on YouTube, at scale within display, and then within search. And depending on your savvy and sophistication, you can either do uh, all the, the buying and purchasing with all the bells and whistles that you get within a normal AdWords campaign, or you can choose this new uh, mechanism, which is universal app campaigns, which just makes it a lot easier to execute an advertising campaign. And so now I'm gonna take a quick moment and talk about the monetization side and the opportunities therein. And so certainly Google believes fundamentally um, in advertising as a way to drive monetization. It's been core uh, of our business over the last 10 or 15 years. And we certainly expect that this trend is gonna continue as it relates to just the um, ad, ad environment within the digital environment, whether that's both on mobile web or also uh, in an app environment. So the expectation is that ad revenue is gonna grow to about 200 billion in 2019. So it represents a very oppor you know, big opportunity um, uh, as you think about monetization. And I think most people in here know as it relates to gaming, is that there's such a small cohort of users that are actually the ones that are you know, tip, typically doing all the in-app purchases. And so um, advertising, and certainly you can do other things, but advertising is a very compelling way to do this. I just saw some stats from App Annie uh, last night that I was reviewing, and it varies so much from region to region. So as you think about it from an export business perspective, the difference between revenue both on in-app purchase and the revenue that happens um, from an ads perspective. If you look at a market, let's say like Japan, Japan has actually, it's all in-app purchase and there's a very, very small percentage that is ad driven. Whereas if you look at a market, let's say like India, um, smaller amount from in-app purchase, but a very, very significant percentage that comes from advertising. So as you think about where do you export and what are the monetization solutions, not only do you need to think about the, the differences between whether it's ads or in-app purchase, but also on a market-to-market -market basis, how do you maximize the opportunity? If, for instance, you were going into the Japan market, advertising is probably not going to be the driving force of that. And like I said, if you're going into India or other markets, you may want to have a over-indexing from an advertising standpoint. And so one of the critical pieces and the part of the ad mob business from a publisher perspective is what I'll call um, just smarter segmentation. And so as I talked about before, if you have good analytics at the core of what you do, and you can understand the segments and the cohorts of your users that are performing particular actions, then you can make smarter decisions and show in-app purchase ads to those users that are more likely to uh, perform a given behavior, and you show advertising to those users that are unlikely. And so this is a, you know, just a, a sample example of, again, percentage-wise, of where we're seeing a lot of the, um, the uh, spend that is coming from both on the in-app purchase side and from an ads perspective. And so uh, before I close it out, I just wanted to share three brief case studies that talk about this in a little bit more detail than some of the products that I've talked about thus far. And so number one, uh, Machine Zone, who is a large spender at Google um, and has been using the TrueView format um, to drive uh, both awareness of their games but also installs, is seeing that relative to other vi uh, video platforms that the um, YouTube users are 15% more valuable than other competing platforms. So again, a, the rich kind of endemic nature of the gaming environment in YouTube. B, the pre-qualification with video are leading to just better outcomes. The app in the middle, Lineo, um, is, uh, had been using universal app campaigns and was very easily uh, uh, capable of getting up and running in a short period of time, driving 10,000 new downloads in one month with a 20% lower CPI than when they were building and executing these campaigns with the specifics that they are running across YouTube, across AdMob, and across search. So far easier, far more efficient way for them to drive traffic. And then last but not least is from a publishing standpoint, uh, a company called Six Waves, who is using basically this smarter ad mob 
and was able to drive um, uh, users that had been lapsed, the 20% users over the last two weeks that were lapsed and hadn't been making in-app purchases, using essentially some of the segmentation um, and running house ads to drive in-app purchases, we're able to get spenders that were not spending to come back and spend more. And so um, with that, I'll end here. We started talking about, I think, the history of where gaming has started and some of the discovery mechanisms, where we are today in the mobile environment where both discovery and gaming is happening on the same platform. There are a multitude of ways that you can think about driving discovery of your applications. There are a lot of great solutions both at Google and outside of Google to help you find customers, both to get them to the front door, whether CPI is your game or whether it's more LTV. Um, and also, how do you think about making money? I think who knows where this business goes in the next 10 years, but it'll certainly be interesting to see uh, the evolution of this and all the different screen types and the types of games and the type of discovery uh, and how we all succeed in this business moving forward. So with that, I just wanted to say thank you uh, and appreciate the time. Can I take a couple of questions? Or? Okay, uh, we have time for just a couple of audience questions. We have a vo uh, volunteer here with a microphone, uh, so just wait until he comes to you. You can raise your hand and, and we'll come to you if you have, anybody has questions. Hi, I've got a question about advertising social casino games. You have a beta program open. When, what's happening with that and is that gonna be opened up uh, to the general public? Yeah, there's been a lot of thirst for that, I think, um, uh, here in Israel in particular and a couple other markets around the world. Um, so we just got recent approval to expand that. Um, uh, we're working with our policy team right now to work on the eligibility criteria to expand. Um, that's happening uh, roughly in, in this time frame, October, November, and our plan is to get live um, in uh, the December time frame. So if you are or have not been running, which I assume in this case you have not, is working with your Google, Google account team um, to at least get in the, the whitelist or the beta process for reapproval on that. So I know that's been a big ask, and that is coming soon. But hopefully here in Q4. Yeah. 